now I'm turning it over to Brad Thomas here. He is the Manager of Economic Development for Kentucky's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. So I love this presentation around the Kentucky Fried Collaboration. So take it away. Thank you. Thank you. you stepped in. All right, let's be honest. They put the guy talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken on right before lunch. Uh, I'm going to be honest, though, Kelly missed a golden opportunity, and I don't mean golden fried chicken, but she's got hot dogs, no wait, Italian sausage, hamburgers, blackened fish, so bear with me for a little bit. I'm going to delay your lunch to talk about fried chicken. Well, I'm going to talk about our version of fried chicken, and you know, anytime I go around the world, I always use this guy as the icebreaker. Colonel Sanders is known around the world, and when I tell people I'm from Kentucky, that's usually the, the starting point. And what's interesting, though, is I'm an economic developer. Raise your hand if you're not an educator. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I'm the, oh, oh thank God, I thought I was the only one. I'm not an educator. But what I do as an economic developer, and why do you all care, is that I link industries and jobs with our education system. So, do you all know any economic developers? There's 7,000 economic developers across the country. In my role, I represent 87 of the 120 counties of Kentucky, or as I say, only the good ones. But what I do is I connect dots. I'm not an education expert, but I reach out to friends like Jody Adams and Mark Harrell to help solve problems that companies may run into as they consider where to locate. I know the gentleman from Virginia was talking about some of the things they do. I compete against Virginia on a regular basis for economic development projects. But you know, I travel the world telling the story of Kentucky and why companies need to look at Kentucky. As I said, there's 7,000 other people that do this exact same job, but I'm going to be honest, i got a better job than they do. The problem is most people have no idea where Kentucky is, right? So, so I usually start off with a graphic like this. It's right there because most people in Europe, they know New York, they know Atlanta, they don't even know Georgia. They know Atlanta, they know Texas and California. I am in flyover country. I embrace it. Because the thing about flyover country is there's about 44 states that the world deems as flyover country. I gotta stand out. But how do I stand out? Yeah, you got it, chicken, KFC, everybody knows it. They also know that stuff. So it also makes it a lot easier. Bourbon for some reason goes well with chicken or maybe that's just in my house. But we've got a lot of bourbon stories and horse racing and I say this is the greatest commercial in the history of states ever. I, I used to work, uh, go ahead and I'll tell you, I'm a recovering state government employee. I used to work for 25 years at the state and I set up trade missions for our governors through the years. So when did we always plan those? The second week of May, because the first week in May, everybody has Kentucky on their mind with the Derby. So keeping with that theme of KFC, bourbon, and the Derby, we tell the story of Kentucky. That's a beautiful picture of Kentucky. Or is that Virginia? I can never remember. But I think it's Kentucky, I'm pretty sure. But we have so many beautiful vistas, it's easy to tell the story of Kentucky. But it all comes back to telling it from a different perspective, one that's memorable. And that's really the key to this presentation, is talking about how to make things memorable and to talk about skills. When you think about Kentucky, that's the kind of skills that you think our workforce would have, right? We're really good at making things the way they made it in 1865. But let me tell you, Kentucky is different. Is there anybody here from North Dakota? Good, we can talk about them. Uh, you know, I'm just glad I do not have to tell the story of North Dakota because I don't know what I would say. We're really good, but there's also a South Dakota. You know, there's nothing that makes them stand out. But when I go around the world talking about Kentucky, there's so many things to say. Now, since you all are educators, I gotta, I gotta play teacher here for a second. What is the number one export of Kentucky? Go ahead, stand up, tell me what you think it is. No, Mark, no, Jody, you can't answer. Go ahead. Bourbon, oh, that's a great one. No, that's not even in the top 20. 
Go ahead. Anything else? Corn. That's awesome. That's a great thing. I'm working on a project right now to bring corn to Kentucky because we don't grow enough of it. Coal. That's another good one. That's not even in the top 100. Potatoes. I, I'm going to be honest. That's the first I've ever heard of potatoes. <laughs> so let me tell you the rest of the story. You ready? Yeah, you didn't see that one coming, did you? We're number two in the country in aerospace exports. Who knew that? There's a, there's a state called Washington. Anybody ever heard of it? They, they have a plane there. It's called Boeing, I think. Y'all may have heard of it. But they do planes really well. What did we do really well? How many of you all flew to get here? Raise your hands. If you flew to get here, you better think a Kentuckian because 95% of the braking systems on your commercial planes and military planes are made in Kentucky. You're welcome. All right? But what I really want to say is this is the Ice Cube project, Project Ice Cube. You may not have heard of it. You're going to hear of it because it's sitting on a launch pad right at this very second, right here in Florida. Now, what's neat about Ice Cube is that when NASA decided they wanted to go to Mars, the first place that they came was Moorhead State University in Moorhead, Kentucky. Why? Because we make small satellites very well in Kentucky. We do it well. So here's the thing is, people do not expect the story of Kentucky. Matter of fact, did you know there's only four uh, places in the world that are part of the Deep Space Network? Did you know that? I'll give you a hint, one of them's in Moorhead, Kentucky. So when the satellites get up in space, guess who talks to them? Students. I know this, why? because my 17-year-old son is one of those ones that talks to the satellites. Yeah, I said 17. He's been in college for a year. Why? It's because we have exposed him to the benefits of aerospace in Kentucky. Here's the other thing. We make a lot of cars there. We make Corvettes. We make F-250s, F-350s, Toyota Camrys. We make a bunch of cars. But we also make a lot of metals. And as you hear this presentation, you're going to hear it come full circle. And when I say full circle, you'll understand what I mean here in a minute. But we also have an agriculture, past and future. This, my friends, is the future of agriculture. Yeah, that's an AI robot picking tomatoes. So if you think you know agriculture, come to Kentucky. I'll teach you agriculture. It's in 60-acre greenhouses. Yeah, I said 60-acre greenhouses. So when we think about Kentucky, you know, this is the, my favorite quote. If these United States can be called a body, then Kentucky can be called its heart. The way Kentucky beats controls the whole country. And I, I'm going to go ahead and brag. I think the world. So but the secret to my job is coming up with a story. It's the three S's here. No, Mark, it's not those three S's. But it's the three S's, it's story, it's strategy, it's success. You have to have a story. Every educator in this room needs to have a story to connect their students to a STEM career. You've gotta have a strategy, and ultimately, that yields success. So, once again, we're gonna follow the kernel here. It's about these 11 herbs and spices coming together in perfect harmony to be able to tell that story. So you got to fire up the oil. We know we've got problems, right? I'm going to tell you from an economic developer standpoint, my biggest problem is this right here. There's no problem finding jobs. Hell, I've started uh, uh, on projects that I've worked. It's been about $9 billion worth of projects since 2015. 17,000 jobs created. The problem is that's the sign that's killing me. We've got all these facilities opening up but they can't find workforce, or they can't find that kind of workforce. They have got to have skilled workers, because you know what? We're not building things the way we used to. We're using technology in ways that we never even envisioned. Here's something, too. We're not going to talk about a whole lot of different things. We're going to talk about chicken, just like the colonel. Stick to chicken. 
You don't see hamburgers on the KFC menu. We're going to talk about the things our state is really good at. We're not talking about this manufacturing world anymore. It doesn't exist. It's this one. We have to understand the world is changing, so we have got to change. We've got to change our classrooms. We've got to change the way that we tell kids about careers. So what I'm going to challenge you all to do is become an expert. And how do you become an expert? You ask for help. And remember I told you there's 7,000 economic developers. Most people in our state, especially in education, had no idea that we're an aerospace state. None of them realized that we are an, an automated industry state. It's advanced manufacturing that is transforming our state and the opportunities for our students. So you gotta get on the computer and look. I will throw out this to you. If you're truly interested in what your state's good at, contact Kelly and have her email me and I will send you a list of what is made in your state and is exported around the world. All right, it's something that will be eye-opening for you because I know we've got people from New York, we've got people from Virginia. Do you know what your state is really good at? If you don't, how can you tell the story? It's about externships, getting our teachers into facilities so you actually can see the way things are done. All right, oh wait, you better hold that applause because I got a better story coming up. It's about packaging, and I just heard the good doctor from BCU talking about packaging. It's about pictures and storytelling. And this is one of my favorite pictures because this is the picture that I use for a publication in Europe that I write for to tell the story that I'm getting ready to share with you all. This is Mark Harrell at our state TSA conference, passing out awards. Do you know who is the sponsor of Mark's TSA uh, state conference? Yeah, it's me, it's my company. Why? Because we know it's important. We understand that putting money towards something like that is much more important than taking an ad out in a magazine. I now have 3,000 kids that know my company, that know what we do, that I can tell the story about. It's about doing keynote speeches at STEM camps. I wear these things out. It's on Saturdays, it's on Sundays, it's on Monday nights, it doesn't matter. Because I know if a kid has signed up for a STEM camp, they've got an opportunity to transform my state and my community. Pictures sell, you just heard it a few minutes ago. You've got to show these kids to companies. Companies want to know that you have this type of opportunities for their kids because if I have a company coming from South Korea, they are moving their family here. They want to know that the education they're going to get in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, compares to what they were going to get in Seoul, Korea. I have to tell a story that's going to make them want to come to my community. We've got to make sure we're documenting how things happen. My, my friends, I'm going to tell you, we are in a TikTok world. And if you don't believe me, talk to your students. If a video is over 30 seconds, you're losing half your audience. If it's over 90 seconds, you've lost 90% of your audience. The world is a TikTok world and you've got to sell in it. You've got to be an influencer. And I'm going to go back to the kernel on this one. How many of you all know that there is a line every Christmas day in Japan for KFC chicken? If you've ever been there, you will understand that they have to put their order in for KFC chicken right now for Christmas Day chicken. Why? It's because KFC, in their genius marketing, convinced the entire continent of Japan that Colonel Sanders was Santa Claus. Great marketing. Oh my gosh. It's one of those stories that lives on in infamy and everybody looks at them, how did you all pull that one off? They don't even know. But I can tell you this, that they ship in so much chicken for December that the Japanese sales are greater than the entire continental US for that one week period. Imagine that. 
So let's do a case study. I mean, I've rambled on, I've talked about chicken, I've talked about 11 herbs and spices, I even talked about aerospace. But let's give a real world example. Anybody know where that is? No, it's not Kentucky, but you know what? You're catching on to the way I sell things. Anybody know where that is? That is Ulm, Germany. Boy, I tell you what, if you're planning your next vacation, this is the place to go, because you know why? Albert Einstein was born there. That is the world's tallest cathedral. And what else do you know about Ulm? Well, probably you didn't know those two things, but what else do you know about Ulm? It's a small rural community, just like the ones I represent in Kentucky. Now, what's interesting is that there's a company there that's been there for over 200 years. The entire community has been built around this company. This company believes in a brighter future. They're making plans for the next 200 years. They understand that we've got to have a renewable future. They know that we've got to embrace new technologies and do things in a different way than they did 200 years ago. So who is it? The company's name is Veland, and, and Veland started a process of trying to find a site for their new state-of-the-art recycling center, and they looked all around the world, and do you know where they ended up? Shelbyville, Kentucky. Why? Well, I can tell you because I worked this project from the moment it started. They wanted to find some place that would embrace them just like their hometown. They wanted some place that they could influence the future trajectory of that community, not only from an economic state standpoint, but also from an education standpoint. They knew they wanted to make a state-of-the-art copper refinery that would transform the whole industry. They believed that copper is in a circular world now. They believe that copper doesn't have to be mined anymore. They think that there's enough material already out there to, to keep the world going. What's interesting about copper, I'm gonna be honest, I know way too much about it now. What's interesting about copper is you can recycle it infinitely. So the copper that is in the pennies in your pocket, by the way, it came from Veland, could have been copper that was mined in King Arthur's day. It's the same copper. It's just transformed in different ways. So how did we convince Veland to invest upwards of a billion dollars over the next few years to locate in Shelbyville, Kentucky? As an economic developer, I had to call on friends because remember, I, I don't do anything. I just connect dots. I tell stories. But I'm smart enough to know that I bring in friends like Mark Harrell to help, help tell a story of how we can create a future workforce. Because remember, we have those help wanted signs everywhere. If people want to talk about unemployment rates and building a new facility, they're on the wrong page. Their future workforce is in the ninth grade right now. We need to start understanding the community's impact and that company's impact on the education system. So we developed with the company a talent pipeline take pictures of this, steal it, I don't care. It's one of those things that this is what the company wants, this is how we convince them to invest in Kentucky, and I will tell you, your economic development friends probably never ever thought of this, because once again, we're doing things differently. We're not talking about what we were, we're talking about where we're going. So look, we've got a K through five plan. We're gonna have the company introduce to kindergarten through fifth grade. We're gonna do talent identification. We wanna know who the smart kids are on the early stages so we can follow them. We wanna do externships because kindergarten teachers in their new facility is gonna be very important. Did I tell you about the recycling center? Nobody touches the metal. It comes in, the recycled materials come in on a rail car they're automatically moved into the production facility. There's gonna be a fluoroscope and other AI technologies that's gonna figure out what the metal is. Once again, nobody's touching it. Nobody will touch that metal as it comes through the entire facility. 
So we want to make sure our teachers understand what that is. So guess what? This company, they're going to pay for those externships. Not only are they going to, to implement this in a way that's transformational, but they want to transform the industry and the education system. So they're going to be sponsors. They're going to sponsor all the TSA events that they can find. They're going to sponsor all the STEM clubs they can find. They're going to set up camps. They want problem solving being taught in the classrooms. Go through sixth through eighth, they want to continue with a lot of those things. But they also want to start developing skills, skills that you can use in that facility. What kind of skills? AI skills. If you're not talking about AI in your classrooms, you all are about 20 years behind. The world is changing and it's changing rapidly. You cannot rely on what you were taught when you were in school. It's changing that quickly. The 9th through 12th, we're going to start developing even more curriculum that's going to be targeted to separating out career tracks for students. That's that German mentality of building uh, the internship into the, uh, the other stages of becoming employers of these students. And then last, they're going to identify kids in high school and pay their way through college. Wait, wait, it gets better. They want PhD students. So they not only want to have frontline workers, they want to have the best back office staff, but then they also want to start developing those next CEOs, CFOs, and they want to identify them starting in kindergarten. This, my friends, is the future of the way the world is looking at education and careers. Careers start in classrooms, and it's not in your senior classrooms. It's in your elementary classrooms. This is the governor announcing this project. He's excited about it. But you see the mantra of the company, empowering success. Notice they don't say their success. They're thinking globally here. So how do you get from that storytelling to the groundbreaking? If you really want to know, let me know. And I will help draw out how you can replicate this entire process in your communities and your schools. Because just like the Colonel, we want to have a franchise on every corner. We want to take our chicken to the world. Because as the Colonel says, my chicken sells itself. And that's the way we're doing it in Kentucky. So thank you all for giving me a moment to talk. And <laughs>